Hello, Ms. Auctioners. Today I want to talk to you about neuroplasticity and a little bit about the difference between neuromuscular and medical massage. I had told you guys that I wanted to take it up a notch, you know, that I wanted to start giving you guys a little bit more information. So this is what I'm intending to do with this video. So let's start with neuroplasticity and neuroplasticity, which they're the same thing. So I'll give you the description, and that is the ability of neural networks in the brain to change through growth and reorganization. Individual neural pathways making new connections, uh, systemic adjustments like cortical remapping. Uh, it includes circuit and network changes that result from learning, uh, uh, learning something new, the ability to adjust uh, through practice or environmental influences or just, you know, retraining your brain. So this tells us now that, you know, the, abil the ability of the brain to adjust now. I know for a long time they had said that, you know, you're the brain stopped adjusting like about the time that you were eight. 25 but that's changed since then now they know that it can create new pathways and that's what we try to do with massage so i want to talk a little bit about what we do as massage therapists you know massage therapists we increase the blood flow and remember that blood is what brings nutrients and oxygen to every single cell in your body reabsorbs nutrients from the small intestine and carries it out you know throughout your whole uh, system so what we do as massage therapists is we increase blood flow we increase you know we create hyperemia which if you increase that you're working on a skeletal muscle well it's going to heal itself because we're giving the body the muscle what it needs to heal itself you know, we're not the miracle the miracle is the body we're just assisting the body to heal itself so it's very important for us to increase that blood flow you know it increases endorphins you know for for the uh, for the body to heal itself what we're doing is creating and retraining for new neuro uh, neurological pathways uh, retraining the communication between the nervous system and the nervous system uh, even at the neuromuscular junction where the 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 neuron the neuron connects with a skeletal muscle and it sends the messages through neurotransmitters you know if you've been sending uh, messages from the sensory or you know sensory nerves to the brain that you're in pain you know you you want to retrain that you want to create some of the uh, pain-free neurological pathways again so trauma is recorded by the sympathetic system uh, and it, you know the sympathetic system is your flight or fight that's the one that dilates your pupils gets you ready either to run away you know it increases your pain receptors so when somebody is hurting you know the re pain receptors are like on like when you leave your water hose on all the time and it over floods well it's it's the same thing the the sympathetic system is for your survival your survival mechanism you know and it sends messages to the brain what we want to do as massage therapists is engage more of the parasympathetic system which that decreases pain receptors and it's more of your rest and digest um, Another thing I, I want to touch a little bit on is the limbic system, which, you know, we can also affect. It controls the basic emotions like fear, anger, you know, ple pleasure, reinforces behaviors so we can reinforce positive behaviors and positive touch to your client. Uh, limbic system is also a charge of emotions and memory and uh, survival behaviors. So. Like I said, as massage therapists, we have a tremendous amount of effect on the physiological processes of the body and also uh, on the psychological. And I encourage you to, I, I, I wanna share this book with you. The Body Keeps the Score. It is the brain, mind, and body in the healing of trauma. This is so important. It's really made a difference for me. Uh, no, I'm not getting paid or <laughs> anything like that, but I just really, this book has helped me a lot. As, and, and I wanna talk a little bit about this book because 
you know, it talks about the brain and the body and how how the trauma gets recorded into your muscles and how, you know, as massage therapists, we might at some point or another, even that might come up. And I'll tell you uh, a, a little story, you know, from a client that this happened to me about 25 years ago. And I, I was, I, I didn't really know what, you know, too much about the psychological connection to that level, you know. And um, I was working on a client that came in with rotator cuff problems on her right shoulder. And she was very guarded and had been in pain for years. And she finally wanted to um, give massage therapy, you know, a, a try and see if it would help her with her shoulder. So she came in, you know, the first time she was very guarded. I had to ga gain her get her to gain my trust for me to be able to touch. Remember Hilton's law. Hilton's law is when a nerve is, y the nerve uh, supplies the skeletal muscle, the joint, the tendon, the skin, and also the internal organ around, if there's an internal organ around that area. So in working that area, uh, I'm affecting all of it. And at the beginning, even her skin was, sensitive to the touch because of Hilton's law. She had been guarded for so long. And by the third time that she came back, she started crying in the middle of the session. And I really, I really didn't know what was going on. And like I said, I was new. Uh, I kind of freaked out myself a little bit because she was like really crying. She, she was just sobbing. And she told me that uh, it just blurted it out. She says that she had been raped nine years before and that the man had her in an arm lock against the wall. So that thus the injury, and as I was working on her, it released that memory, it released the trauma. And uh, I, I, like I said, I really didn't know what to do. Luckily, I worked with a psychotherapist who uh, advised me to um, refer her to a female therapist. And I, I think I only worked on her one more time after that and her shoulder just really released and started, you know, feeling better. So there's a lot to be said about the uh, mind. And there's and I'm sure all of you have had clients that no matter what you do with them, no matter how many times you work on them, they can come in. I've had clients that I've had for 25 years. No matter, no matter how many times you work on them, they just don't heal. You know, they don't get better. And then you have that client that comes in and they're able to release an emotion with it, you know, whether it's PTSD or, you know, abuse or whatever the case may be, you know, muscle holds that memory or even car accidents. I've had several clients throughout the years that have been in car accidents and the, the body is very guarded. You know, the, the body is, is guarded for a very good reason, you know, because the trauma gets, you know, um, the trauma is recorded by the uh, sympathetic nervous system. So as massage therapists, we want to be very aware of this and stay within our scope of practice, but also know that we can help our client at different levels. You know, uh, w the nociceptors on our skin, you know, that detect pain, there's three different types. One that detects, you know, temperature, cold or hot, like if you're getting a sunburn, you know, your body will tell you it's really hot outside to protect you so that you can move away from the heat. Uh, another one is uh, uh, chemical, like if you know, if you drop acid or Clorox, you know, it'll send a message to your brain, you know, that it, that it, it you're, it's burning, or you know, that uh, there's you dropped a chemical on you, or mechanical. If let's say you get in a car accident and you get pinned, you know, so all these uh, messages, nociceptors are sending messages to your brain. So that's the reason that. Uh, deep pressure is not something I agree with. It's something that you want to uh, stay within the range of what your client can tolerate. It's not about how deep you can go. It's about how specific you go. That, that's the beauty between um, neuromuscular and medical massage. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the difference. So medical massage, you can work on a client fully clothed. They don't have to take off their clothes. Uh, they they retrain you on uh, how to use your muscles, you know, how to do stretches and exercises to keep the muscles from hurting themselves again. And they go, you go very specific. And it's not as thumb intensive. With neuromuscular, I, I've been training both. I've, I've taken the neuromuscular training since 1995. I've 
I've gone through it, you know, a, a few times, and it's very thumb intensive, and that's what really hurt my thumb. So now, I've l you know learned the the medical massage, and I apply you know fingers, and I I use other parts of you know like my fingers, my forearms. I've learned to use other parts of the body so that I don't hurt my thumbs because my thumbs are already hurt. So that's one of the differences. Another difference is uh, neuromuscular. Your client is still on your table, uh, fully covered, you know, fully draped without clothes on. And you can do a combination of, you know, if you need to do myofascial release and stretches and uh, skin rolling, you know, you can incorporate that with the neuromuscular. You treat trigger points and it's uh, very specific. However, you still stay within the pain tolerance of the client. Neuromuscular, we use a scale from one to 10, 10 being the most pain, zero being no pain. And in medical, they use, you know, just three, you know, uh, just three. One is like, uh, you can handle more pressure and you're okay. Two is like, okay, it's on the, you know, on the verge of being too much. And three is like, okay, stop, that's too much pressure. So it's a little bit more simplistic that way, but it works because, you know, sometimes I, remember I would tell some of my clients like, what number is that from a scale from one to 10? And they, you know, I would have some clients will say, you know, a 8.25, you know, so it's a little bit more com more complicated to use a uh, one through 10 scale, but either one of them works and that's the difference. I like to think that I have married the neuromuscular and medical massage practice you know that i use i'm eclectic i use actually it's a trilogy because i still incorporate you know some myofascial techniques stretching and some good old-fashioned you know um swedish massage even though i know that's the basics however it's very important for you to create that parasympathetic uh relaxation for the client just by teaching them to breathe, it brings down your blood pressure. It takes you to uh, parasympathetic mode, which is your rest and digest, and that's when the body starts healing. So that's important, you know. Uh, you wanna engage the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve is the uh, ner cranial nerve number 10 that comes, comes, you know, from uh, around your ears. It wraps around your lungs, your heart, your digest, your, uh, digestive system so when you take deep breaths you you know you engage the uh, vagus nerve and this really helps your client relax so it can reduce the pain receptor so you can create new neural pathways to retrain the brain it takes about 28 consecutive days of retraining your client and uh, for, you know retraining for good habits and good good um, patterns without the pain so uh, this is one of the reasons why when somebody's coming in with a lot of pain i ask them to come in you know two or three times a week and then taper them off after 28 days tape them taper them off to every two weeks or once a month but at the beginning you want to continue to create those neurological pathways the new ones without pain it's very important you know that you uh, address like i said the pain receptors and recreate new pathways so that that book the body keeps the score has really helped me with the psychological components and please stay with your scope of practice you know that's always very important but we don't just affect the physiological you know the body the skeletal the mu um, muscles but we also affect the mind and if you want to learn more about the neuromuscular, you know, I recommend this, the uh, Modern Neuromuscular Techniques by Leon Chateau. And uh, it, it's excellent. And medical massage, I, I, I recommend it highly. You know, if you want to get some more training, I'm going to continue to um, do more of these videos. And I hope this helped you. Until the next time, create a great day.